Hi there. So a quick little video on this infrared remote control that I purchased from Amazon. I thought it might be interesting to add remote control to a couple of the projects that we build. I'm particularly thinking of maybe some of the smaller robots or some RGB lighting projects or something like that where we might want to just flick through some different settings. This is what came in the kit. You basically get the um, remote control unit itself. We get the receiver mounted on a little circuit board here. But it is pretty simple. It is literally just the uh, receiver and a resistor, I think. There are a couple of components in there. And then just a header as a breakout. Not really anything to it. They do give you um, an extra transmitter LED, so if you want to build it into your own project rather than using the remote control they give you, you've got the option of doing it yourself. And for some reason they give you these jumper cables. I'm not quite sure why they give you four, because the sensor itself only has three connections on it, so not quite sure why they give you four. But it is a nice little touch. Yeah, spare one for some reason. Maybe there's some logic to that. Always handy to have jumper cables. Let's take a look at the remote control. Slightly different to the picture that I was on the Amazon website. Um, I think the they had the um, arrow functions here at the at the top and the number pad at the bottom, but I guess it doesn't really matter. There is a battery in there, and I I'm not quite sure how it comes out though. It does say release there, so oh yeah, so you kind of push that across and then pull it out. Lithium battery there, three volts. I think they should last quite a long time. The, the lithium cells. Okay. So let's get this um, connected up to a breadboard and have a little play around with it with an Arduino Uno. If we take a look at the library that I've used, we go to Manage Libraries. And then if I search for it in here, it's called IR Remote. There it is. So you can see that's installed. And it's the IR Remote Library by Sheriff. Now I got that from GitHub. So it's github.com arduino dash ir remote slash arduino ir remote. You can see here it says version 302. I seem to have 301 installed. Now I downloaded the zip file by clicking this button here. Go into download zip. Now if you extract that zip file to this location here, now I'm on Windows, so it's My Documents and then Arduino Libraries. You can see that there, I've extracted it to there. And if you just restart your Arduino IDE, it should then be available. You should then see under the Examples menu this new menu here called IR Remote and you get all these example sketches and the one I'm looking at is called IR Receive Demo. Now I've cut it down a little bit because there was some logic in there for different boards. Now I'm using the Arduino Uno so I didn't need any of that so I've taken it out just to make this a little simpler to look at. First thing it says here is specify which protocol is to be used 
um, and if no protocol is defined then all protocols are active so I've just left them commented out then we've got this mark excess micros is subtracted from all marks and added to all spaces before decoding to compensate for the signal forming of different IR receiver modules um, they give you a value of 20 and it says there 20 is recommended for the cheap VS1838 modules now this is a VS1838 module and I would say the price I paid it probably is a cheap one so I've left that as it is I did experiment with it but I didn't find it made any difference so I just left it at the default of 20 the next thing we've got is this include irremote.h that's the main library that we want to use and then we've just got our IR receive pin specified as pin 12 this next line here is some channel pins that I've defined that I'm going to use to just demonstrate this so I've just got four pins two through to five here's our setup function I'm just defining my four pins as outputs and then we've also got the built-in LED also as an output we've got serial begin just printing a few serial lines and then finally we have this IR receiver dot begin and it takes in our receive pin this is the main loop so it says here check if received data is available and if yes try to decode it decoded result is in the IR receive dot decoded IR data structure and you get a command and an address as well as the raw data so it says here if IR receiver dot decode and then we've got this little block here another if statement that's looking for some flags um, it seems to be looking for an overflow condition now I've left this in here but I've never seen it go into this section so I'm not quite sure what that's about but left it in just in case but if we're not overflowing then we print out the data that we received I don't need that bit I removed that there was a debug button but I'm not using it so I'll just take that out then we've got this IR receiver dot resume it says that's important to continue re receiving the next value then we're just looking at the data we got and if it's address zero and it's command 45 I'm calling this set channel zero this set channel function is just my function that I've added we'll take a look at that in a minute and if we have command as 46 we'll set channel 1 47 will be channel 2 and 44 will be channel 3 and then this is that little set channel function it's just a simple loop it's looping through from 0 to 3 and for each one it's doing a digital write to my channel pins and then we've got this expression here so if channel equals the current pin that we're looking at then that will evaluate to true and that channel will effectively be turned on or that pin will be turned on otherwise it will evaluate to false and turn the pins off so what it's doing is it's turning off all the pins except from the one that was selected so let's upload that and take a look at what it does okay I'll just very quickly go over what I've got on the breadboard here so I've just got four different colored LEDs here and some current limiting resistors I've got different values in here for the different colors so I found that the um, the blue one in particular is extremely bright so I've got a 1k on that I think I've got 470 K's on all the others doesn't really matter and I've just got these connected to four of the IO pins on the Arduino Uno and then we've got one signal line coming off of the infrared receiver if we look at that infrared receiver it's got marked on it just see there a minus and a plus and then an S and the S is the signal so the minus is the ground plus is the plus 5 volts and the S is the signal 
So I've just got on the breadboard connections camera from 5 volt and ground and then this wire here is my signal so it needs to go in like this I've just got the uh, plus 5 volts and ground coming from the Arduino and I've linked the ground across because I need it for the uh, LEDs Now I have noticed that whenever the camera is on, it seems to be interfering with the infrared. With the receiver here, you can see it's flashing away like mad. So I'm not sure if that's going to interfere with the behaviour. I'm moving the camera away a bit. So if I put the camera over here, it seems to be a bit happier. No, doesn't like the camera, does it? Okay, so if I press button one on the remote, I'm going to hold it up here because the um, sensor is pointing upwards into the air. So you can see it's switched to channel one. If I press the two, switch to channel two. Press the three, it's gone to channel three. And then we should have four, goes to channel four. Now that performed flawlessly, but my general experience is it's a little unpredictable, a little unreliable. Seems to be working great now. I can assure you it wasn't earlier. There, that was a little bit glitchy. I had to press twice to get that one on. Um, if I go to the green, yep. Red, one, two. I had to press it twice. If I go to the green, I'm trying the blue. The blue I had to press twice. Yellow was fine. Red, Again, I had to press twice. Green worked. Blue I had to press twice. Yellow worked. It's kind of just a little unreliable. It does work, but sometimes you have to press the button a few times for it to pick it up. And I don't think that's got anything to do with the, the camera because I've tried it without the camera pointing at it and it's makes no difference. One thing I did do is I put a capacitor on my um, plus 5 volt and ground. Now I don't know if that's kind of psychological. I put it in and I thought it was behaving better so I thought it made a difference but then again after a little while it seemed un unreliable again so it probably makes no difference whether we got this capacitor in there or not. That is 100 microfarads. I tried different values. It didn't really seem to make any difference. I've tried it from a couple of meters away. It is more, um, le it is less reliable from uh, greater distances. Uh, it's obviously better if you've got direct line of sight and you're fairly close to it. But yeah, overall, not super impressed with it. I don't know if there's anything I'm doing wrong or if there's anything I could try and adjust to improve this. So if you've got any ideas, then please leave me a comment. It's quite neat. I quite like the, the concept. Um, just wish it was a little bit more reliable. But there you go. That's the infrared remote on an Arduino.